Today you're going to be learning a new method of finding the vertex when your parabola is in standard form. This method is called completing the square and it takes your equation from standard form and it puts it into vertex form so that you can pick out the vertex as being your h and k values. This is the most common way of determining the vertex so please make sure that you pay attention, you understand uh, either at the end of the video or in class tomorrow and you remember that this process is called completing the square. So the first step is to common factor the coefficient of the x squared, which is this 2, from the first two terms. Do not factor out the x. So we're only going to use the first two terms and we're only going to common factor out the a value. So take the 2 on the outside and you're left with x squared plus 2x and you're only doing it to the first two terms. Alright, so we already have our a value here. We got what's part of your k value. This isn't the k yet and so we're starting already to make it look like it's vertex form. The second step is you have to take this coefficient of x and you have to divide it by 2 and you're always going to divide it by 2. You don't divide it by 2 because it's the same number. You're always going to divide it by 2 and then square the number. So 2 divided by 2 is 1 and 1 squared is equal to 1. The third step is we're going to take this 1 I'll show you where we're going to put it. Alright, so we're going to take this 1 and we're going to add it to this equation so that we're going to be able to factor this. And this here ends up being a perfect square trinomial. But the problem is we can't just add 1 to an equation because it's going to change the equation. So what we also have to do is subtract the 1 because if you add 1 and subtract 1, you're really adding nothing. It may look stupid right now, but you'll see why what we do with this in a minute. So, what ends up happening is we need this part right here to be your perfect square trinomial and that's what's going to give us this portion right here that's going to be your perfect square trinomial right there. So what we have to do is we have to get rid of this negative 1. We have to get it outside of the bracket. So you're going to move the last term in the bracket to the outside of the bracket, but to do that you need to multiply it by the a value, which is 2 because it's almost it's distributive law. If it's going to come out of the bracket, it needs to be multiplied with the a value. And then you're going to add those two constants together. So it's going to look like this. Here's your perfect square trinomial on the inside of the brackets. The negative 1 times 2 on the outside is going to be negative 2 and it's going to be combined with the negative 3 to make your k value. So the negative 2 minus 3 is going to be negative 5. So that's your a, that's your k, and now what we want to do is factor this perfect square trinomial to get that h value. So the two numbers that multiply to 1 and add to 2, the numbers are both 1. So because the numbers are both 1, we're going to write it as x plus 1 squared. Because the two numbers that multiply to 1 and add to 2 are 1 and 1, and since they're the same, we can just write it as x plus 1 squared. Now we have put it into vertex form. You can state the vertex. So the vertex, your h value is equal to negative 1, 
and your k value is equal to negative 5. Alright, so let's watch another example. Sometimes it takes a few examples before you really get it. First step, we're going to take the negative 5 and we're going to divide it out of the first two terms but just the number only, not the x. Be careful with that negative because positive 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4. Second step, you're going to take this number here, negative 4, divide it by 2, and square it. Make sure you put these brackets around. These brackets are important. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, and then negative 2 squared is 4. So what we do is we take that 4, we add it, and subtract it inside the bracket. There's that part we need for the perfect square trinomial. So this negative 4, we need to get it out of the bracket. And to get it out of the bracket, you need to multiply it by negative 5. Negative 4 times negative 5 is 20. And 20 minus 3 is 17. So once again, there's our perfect square trinomial. So the two numbers that multiply to 4 and add to negative 4 are both going to be negative 2 and negative 2. And because they're the same, you can write it as x minus 2 squared. Just a little hint, this number right here is always going to be the same as this number right here. So after you've divided by 2 and before you square it, that number negative 2 is always going to be the same as this number right here. And your vertex is at 2, 17. Okay, so there are four examples for you to try. If you want, you can press pause now and try all four of them yourself, or if you want to watch me do one more, you can watch me go through example 3. But try example 3, 4, 5, 6 on your own. A couple things to be cautious about is when there is no A value showing, the A value is 1. And when there is no constant showing, the constant is just 0. So. You can press pause now, try the, the four examples, or you can watch me do one more. So we're going to factor the negative 3 out of the first two terms. Remembering, negative 12 divided by negative 3 is positive 4. Now we're going to take that number in front of the x divide it by 2 and square it. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So now we're going to add that 4 and subtract that 4 inside the bracket. There's our perfect square trinomial. 
So this negative 4 has to come out of the bracket and gets multiplied by negative 3. Always make sure you put the positive 1 before the negative 1. And negative 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. And 12 plus 1 is 13. Lastly, you've got your perfect squared trinomial. So the two numbers that multiply to 4 and add to 4 are both 2. So that's x plus 2 squared. And your vertex is at negative 2, 13. Okay, so if you watched this example, now you can press pause, try examples 4, 5, and 6, and then press play on the video again to check your answer. So please press pause now. Okay, welcome back. Here you can check your answer. Uh, a couple things that we'll note here is if you get an A value of 1, just for you to note, you don't have to write the 1. You can just leave it blank. It's totally up to you. Another thing to make note of is that sometimes people will skip steps. That's okay if you want to skip steps. It's just the more steps you skip, the more chances you might get a mistake, and then it's harder for me to give part marks. So check your answer to question four. If we move to question five and six, again with the plus zero at the end, you don't have to write the plus zero, but you can if you want. And for the last question, because there's a decimal and it might be too hard to find two numbers that multiply to 1.5 and add to 3, that's where you want to remember that the number inside the bracket is the same number as this number right here. And if this is positive, then this is positive. So if there was anything you didn't understand, please make note of it and ask your teacher at the next class. Thank you.